Chill. Uh huh. Ace the Young Heavy. Heavy. Y'all know the time. Man. The sickness. My nigga Bodil. Some niggas want the money, the power, the respect. Fuck this shit. I want all three of them bitches. Heavy shit. That's the definition of heavy. heavy. Bitch, I'm heavy. Hey. Bitch, I'm heavy. Hey. Louis head and towing something for and fuck a Chevy. Hey. Money everywhere. Money, money everywhere. Money, money everywhere. I'm heavy in the I game. I just spent a hundred thousand dollars stunting on these lanes. Get your money right and you can order steak. Sneaker. Salute you two. Salute you two. Peace to the earths and gods and go mob to the frat. Thanks for joining us again, Ace Heavy Camp, for another exciting episode of Ace Heavy Kicks. Where we look at cool kicks for the comic collector. Now there's people like yourself and people like me, your host, Ace the Young Heavy. Let's get to it this week, y'all. Episode 31 with sneaker news for this week. First thing, let's talk about this. First things first, y'all. That Air Jordan 1 lost the fan release? Garbage. Poo-poo, caca. Horrible, horrible. I actually received exclusive access on two of the sites I was trying to get. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to complete the checkout. So it doesn't even matter if you get the shoes and you can't actually go and purchase them. Uh, a lot of people got their, their orders canceled or you know were not able to complete the checkout as well. What's going on, Nike? Nike sneakers out. Y'all said y'all had 500,000 copies for the people. We know a lot of them got back in the door, but the release itself, the release itself, I mean, man, it took me an hour and 19 minutes, okay? The drop was at 9. I got my notification at 10.19. Said that you did not win. Okay, fair, I get it. But it didn't take you an hour and 19 minutes to let me know that? It's ridiculous, and I'm not the only person this happened to. What was your experience with the release on the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found? Leave a comment down below. But look, y'all get a F, okay? A F Nike for this release. Make it up to us for Christmas. It's holiday, baby. Do something nice for us. Give us another shot drop or something like that. Also, for this week, we know that in the next Seven to ten days, we can expect Adidas to drop the rest of the Yeezy shoes minus Sans, the Yeezy branding on it. Now, when you think about it, the Yeezy shoes, the only place where it really says Yeezy's name, excluding 350 V2s, because 350 V2s have the SPLY 350 on it, right? Outside of those, where do you really see branded for Yeezy on Yeezy shoes? He doesn't even really put his name on the box. It just say Boots, it say YZY or something, and it had a number. He's very low key. So they don't have to do a lot to put these shoes out. Will you be buying them though without Yeezy's name on Knowing this man designed the shoes and so forth, will you still be purchasing? Will you be supporting these? Uh, I think the answer for me, if you know me, if you watch the channel, it's obvious. You can check out that cancel, Kanye canceled episode I did two episodes back. I think it was episode 29. Um, and I spoke out about it before. It was trendy or cool to talk about the fact that um, it is not correct to go with the narrative that, you know, they're trying to bury this man under right now. And I'm not going to even get into it right now. I spoke enough about it, but definitely hit me up if you want to talk. Um, so I don't know about that release. It was going to be something people be into, but those shoes either have any value. Stay tuned for Adidas um, on the Confirm app and also in their stores. They will be releasing the rest of the Yeezys in the month of December. And also some of the previous silhouettes, if I understand it correctly, without the name on it. Last but not least, I want to talk about my most wanted, my most wanted, top six shoes of all time right now. Now, the goal is before episode 50, so that's within between now and the next 19 more episodes to get one of these shoes off the list. The thing is, these shoes are, are not cheap. These are very, very expensive shoes. Very expensive shoes. Hey, but you work hard, you play hard, all right? And I'm all about community building, capacity building, elevation, and getting to the place where you want to be in life. Not about materialism and things, but about a mindset, right? So with that being said, this is nothing but dropping the bucket. 
Uh, number six on my list is the Air Jordan 5 Transformer 84. Now, the Transformer 84 is a dope shoe. It's Air Jordan 5. It reminds you of a regular uh, bread Air Jordan 5 or sat the satins or something like that. But it's got the 84, kind of where the Supreme would be on the Supreme version of the, um, the Air Jordan 5. So this is a very nice shoe. Um, and it's at the bottom of my list just because, you know, it costs a little bit less than the rest of them. That's the only reason why. But I want this shoe so bad. I'm a huge Transformers fan if you know anything about me. Uh, and that's number six on my list. Number five are the Nike Freddy Krueger Dunks. Now, the uh, Freddy Krueger franchise, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, I always was kind of a fan of that as a kid, although I'm not really into scary movies like that, like that. Um, I always thought he was funny, right? Inappropriate and funny. Freddy Krueger Dunk story behind the release, those shoes never actually came out. Uh, there was an issue with New Line Cinema and the people who held the licenses, so the Nike of uh, Freddy Krueger Dunks never actually released to the public. However, pairs do exist. They have been destroyed officially by the Nike executives and Nike staff working at the time. So if you find a pair, it's got oil on it, or it's been cut, or it's been defaced some type of way. And they were all supposed to be burned and taken to a dumpster. I can't wait to get my hand on a pair of these. Uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I guess for the person selling it, unfortunately for the, the buyer, these shoes are going for about thirty dollars to $35,000 on the market. But that's number five on my list of top most wanted shoes. Number four, the Air Jordan 1 High Dior. Now, y'all know that's a very expensive shoe, around the price point of ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000 currently, I believe. Um, the low is a little bit cheaper, but I like the high personally better. It's an Air Jordan 1, it's mostly white um, or off-white color, and then it has the Dior signature print or material on the Nike switch on the side of it. Uh, that's a shoe that I'm going to get at some point. Even if I end up not getting that in the next uh, 19 episode before episode 50, I will be grabbing that one. Uh, coming in at number three, the Air Jordan 1 High Off-White Chicago. In my personal opinion, that is the pent ultimate shoe. Again, I didn't have an opportunity to hit on um, the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found at the store or, I mean, you know, through the official means, through the release. I do have a pair, which I'll see later on in the episode. And it did surprise me again that the release was crappy, and it did surprise me that I didn't get the shoe. Because your boy, AC Young Heavy, camp y'all, I never hit. Never hit. Never hit on oh, none of them shit, and I'm not surprised, and I don't expect Nike to do right in the future either. However, the Air Jordan 1 High Off-White Chicago, that is a bad mofo. That is a shoe that I must have. I do own the uh, Baby Blue version of that shoe. Unfortunately, it is uh, way more expensive to own the Euro White Pair exclusive and also, of course, the Chicago Way. That's one of Virgil Abloh's exclusive shoes, part of the series The Ten, which was when he took the most iconic shoes from Nike's line and redid it and put his artistic um, touch on it. And boy, did he do a beautiful job with all of those shoes. To me, that's my favorite out of them. Let's move on to our top two. Most sought after, most wanted shoe, the Nike Air Mag Back to the Futures. Do I need to say anything else about that? Most people, that is their number one sought after shoe. If you're like a serious sneakerhead and you can get anything and you've been able to acquire some of the shoes on your list, that's the shoe you probably want the most. Me personally, I want that shoe. I love Back to the Future. Uh, my girl, that's one of her favorite movies of all time. So that's a shoe that I've always wanted to grab. Um, and I grab her toys from Back to the Future all the time. So. Um, if I had them shoes, I would definitely probably, she'd probably think I was real cool. So I'm going to try to grab those. Um, unfortunately, those shoes are around that $22,000, $23,000 mark. We've seen uh, Jaspers, my number one most wanted shoe. Louis Vuitton Jaspers, the Kanye patchwork, the Zen gray and pink colorway. That was a dope shoe before I started doing videos, before I started you know, um, getting crazy about shoes in my adult life. This is probably like the first one. You know, after the age of, let's say, 25, when you kind of do what you want to do, you're stretching out, living on your own, et cetera. This is the first shoe like I wanted to get, but I didn't want to spend the money on it at the time. And boy, do I regret it. Um, my brother had this shoe. Uh, my brother Fonzie, Tony, had this shoe. Uh, and I, just, I was started to buy it from him. Uh, but it was one of the things where I was like, you know, I didn't want to give him the satisfaction of knowing I wanted it that bad. So, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to uh, my brother Tony, by the way. Uh, I wish I could have grabbed it from him, no, but I'm going to get these Louis Vuitton Jaspers. If y'all have a pair or know I can grab a pair locally, 
or whatever, and uh, and they're under the nine thousand dollar range. Hit a brother up. Let me know. DM me on IG uh, or instant message me on Facebook, or you know, leave a message down below, a comment um, in, in, uh, on this video. Let me know where I can grab them. I do want those, man. So those are my top six most wanted shoes. What are your most wanted shoes? Let us know down uh, below, ASAP Camp. Uh, but as far as that goes for me, that is all we have this week for Sneaker News. Right, peace, y'all. It's your opportunity to add a third chance to win this week's raffle. Tell them, amen. All right, so for another entry, what you got to do is you got to follow the store, and then you got to subscribe to Ace the Young Heavy's YouTube. We'll drop the ad in the link below. If you do that, you got to show proof once you do subscribe, and you'll get another entry for the giveaway. That's right, so subscribe to Ace Heavy Kicks on YouTube, Ace the Young Heavy, Ace Heavy Kicks, screenshot it, send it to us at the store, make sure you're following us on IG at Top3Kicks, and you'll get a third entry into this week's raffle. Good luck, everybody. Peace. Sneakers for Retail. So, for Sneakers for Retail, Let's check out this very quick Nike community store, Nike outlet vlog, where we pick up a couple pair of shoes, one in particular being the uh, Nike Shelf Life, this is, which is the uh, South African uh, Air Jordan 2s. And they have a lot of other shoes there too, just in the video, um, but nothing really, 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 really like you go crazy for. Nothing I was expecting to see, um, seeing it is holidays. Also, we have a few other stores, so check out our video for Sneakers for Retail. Let's go. Alright Ace Heavy Camp, we got upcoming sneaker releases. These are hot shoes that are coming out within the next month or two months. We got bangers coming out, in my opinion, before the end of the year. Uh, even though Nike is on super cap mode, um, Captain America marries Captain Crunch and creates Captain Planet like on some silly, silly, silly Billy out here, you can still get these shoes if you know where to look. And so again, I just want to give y'all a couple tips real quick before I get into this, okay? Very important, all right? First of all, never buy shoes online right after the drop. The price is going to go up, all right? If you're going to buy the shoes, buy the shoes right before the official drop or before there's a known shock drop because there are people who are panic selling at that point. Okay, it's tip number two. Tip number three, watch out for shock drops in tier zero stores. They'll probably have the shoes before anybody else have them. If you pay attention to these three tips, then you can grab most of the shoes you want for retail without going crazy with them, you feel me? That being said, let's look at upcoming sneaker releases for the next month or two. On 1126, we got the Air Jordan 6 Metallic Silver. That's a dope shoe, it's all black. It's got some uh, metallic metal hits on it, Jordan, and, and uh, on the back of it, uh, on the, the pull tag, I don't know what you call it, it goes across the, the, uh, the collar, the back of the collar. That's coming out uh, before the end of November, so look out for that shoe. I think this shoe is gonna be hood approved. A lot of people are gonna rock that. Obviously, we've seen them kind of take that same approach and put neon green, you know, put infrared, or put other colors on it. But this, I think, is gonna be a shoe that people are going to rock in the winter, and it's probably clean up easy in the snow, too. Everybody don't put a shoe in there to put, um, you know, special juice on their shoes and spray them up and stuff for, for the winter. Some people put their shoes on to wear them and get a wet towel and wipe them off, or don't, 
You know, and I think this is a shoe that'll run you for the winter. 1128, the DJ Cali collaboration with Nike Air Jordan 5 Crimson and Bliss. That Crimson Bliss shoe is booty to me. I do not like the color of that. I don't even like to eat salmon very much. I love fish, but I don't like salmon. And like, it's not crimson to me. Crimson is red. You know what I'm saying? Crimson is harvest color. You know what I'm saying? Crimson roll tide down South Alabama. This is not crimson. It's pink-ish. Or Jay-Z would say mauve. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's not, it's, I don't like that colorway. If that's a shoe you like, cool. Be on the lookout for it on the 28th of November. On the 29th, we have a very funky, very furry shoe. The Nike Flea One Cactus Plant uh, Flea Market Collab shoe. Okay, that's something that Nike's doing. It looks like um, the Grinch would have worn that shoe. So I guess it's perfect just in time for um, Christmas time. So if you... Feeling very uh fa la 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 la, you go ahead and grab this shoe. Not for me, but if I see it for the low real talk and I just felt like doing something strange, I might just wear them for like some house shoes or something with no socks. I don't know. Um, what would you do with it? Leave something down in the comment. Also, December 10th, we're looking at the Jordan 11 Varsity Red, the chairs. That's probably one of the most hood approved shoes, other than the Air Jordan 1 Loss of Family. People are gonna be rocking. For the next three, four, five months, when go pick up the kids at the school, you'll see kids coming out with those shoes on. That is gonna be hood approved. Am I gonna get a pair? If I see one for retail, I don't have to break my neck. I wear it because I wear it in the snow. It's not a big deal to me, those particular shoes. However, I understand the Lord. Be on the lookout for that. With that being said, that's how we got this week for upcoming sneaker releases. Sneaker Pickups So finally, y'all, sneaker pickups for this week. We have the Air Jordan 1 Lawson Fan. Now, it was originally called the Rear Magic, right? Um, and it was retitled to the Lost and Found, released on November 19th, shock dropped and released in other ways and backdoored for months before. But finally, we have the shoes in the official release. So I want you guys to take a look at this dope shoe. I mean, I can't say enough about it. I'm sure if you watch sneaker YouTube at all or where the shoe was coming out, um, you know just how cool this shoe is. We really haven't gotten an Air Jordan 1 in the Chicago colorway uh, in quite some time. And it, we still don't have one exactly like OG High 85, right? It's not exactly how Mike wore it. But it's close enough for me. We see the cracked uh, um, paint applique over the leather to make it look like it's older. It's not quite white on the bottom. You can see it's kind of like a uh, aged white, like a yellow or off-white. Um, and then again, you see um, the bottom looks as if the shoe has been like worn before, right? It's not quite red, it's got like a marble, um, like worn applique to it. And then of course on the collar. Now, um, hold on, let me have you get, I'm just so excited about these shoes, man. I don't know what to do first. Let me show you a little bit in the B-roll. Look at that, this is a dope shoe. Incredible. If you're a Bulls fan, it's a must-have shoe. There's no question about that. Okay, closest thing you're gonna get to Mike's shoe, 1985, is right here. Okay. Yeah, closest you're gonna get to what Mike rocked in 1985 would be uh, the shoe that we're looking at right here. So, it comes with this little tag, like if it was from a mom and pop, all right? Shop, like back in the day, if you were to pick up these shoes. Uh, it comes with two pairs of laces, the white and the black. I don't know personally if I'm gonna do the white or the black, probably the black. Um, but after I do this video, I get to put them on. And that's one of the more, most exciting things for me about doing the video and hurrying up and trying to put the stuff out is because I, I like to do the video before um, I actually wear the shoes. They look better, they look cleaner. But uh, in this case, I almost just put them on before again. This is the box. So it looks like someone took like a regular Nike box, right? And then like a Jordan 1 box and kind of put them together like this what I had at the store, take this. You know, like these are sitting in the back, you know? So it gives you that type of nostalgic look to it. It's got like some paper 
newspaper. If people will wrap up shoes, sometimes they newspaper. Yeah. And uh, man, this is really cool. This is really cool. I was looking forward to this shoe ever since it was announced. A lot of people um, have not kept the same energy they initially had because they didn't think that the shoe was hot um, because it was gonna have that aged look. We weren't getting like an original shoe. Um, but for me personally, it didn't bother me. And this shoe, as I said before, looks exactly like the Jordan 1 Visionary, okay? So, and we looked at that shoe earlier on this channel. Um, well, I don't know, man, maybe 10 episodes ago something like that but I was like being on the lookout I know people may not be feeling this shoe because I don't like the colorway right but this shoe is the exact same shoe as this shoe exact same shoe okay it's just um a different colorway all right I'm gonna show you guys a little bit in the b-roll so you can see yourself a little closer but they both have that aged white okay you see on the toe box here have the aged and cracked applique paint over the leather Right? And you can see it on the collar. So, hold on. Say, hold on, like y'all gotta wait. This is not live. <laughs> see what I'm saying? And so I was right about that. So this is, shoe is gonna be just like the vision. Here. In fact, we see them on the collar. The collars are similar. Um, on the toe, it's cracked. And it's cracked here in the same way. So, very, very similar shoe. Obviously, it's going to be similar. It's the same silhouette. But I think the thing that um, people didn't realize I, and, and, and still sleep on is this is a nice shoe. This is a nice shoe. It's even got the thin here so you can see like the yellow through it, um, like the old school design. This is a dope shoe. And uh, if you can't get this shoe, why, why not grab this one? Not, I'm not saying that this supplants this one. Uh, whatever, I'm just saying that this is is uh, is was the prototype for how they were gonna lay this out. So I'm glad they didn't decide to not drop this because y'all didn't fuck with this, y'all didn't want this one, you know, because this, uh, I like both shoes. Anyway, Air Jordan 1 reimagined, dope shoe. Don't know what the pickup will be for next week. I uh, get my hands on a, uh, with my uh, iron and a couple different fires in terms of uh, things I'm trying to make happen, but you know, it's gonna be a dope shoe, whatever it is. So y'all stay tuned and peace. Elevate. Always doing business. Yes, sir. That's my <laughs> brother right here. Appreciate him always. You know it. You know it. Top three kicks. Get your pair here. Throwback thoughts, throwback thoughts for this week, y'all. I was just thinking about um, what I wanted to do, which is like just go to the store and grab the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Founds. Uh, um, I had to grab them from our store uh, out of our inventory at Top 3 Kicks. So salute to A-Man, salute to Jeff, always the team for looking out. Um, um, you know, you should be able to just like go to the store. What about back in the day when we just used to get up on Saturday morning? And particularly a place I'm going to talk about is out west, Tops and Bottoms, right? So if you're from Chicago, you know about the west side of Chicago. It's a place called Tops and Bottoms. Uh, and on Saturday mornings, you used to get up. It's on Madison. Uh, they move locations once or twice, but they are on the same block always. And you get up, and so if it wasn't athlete's foot, you go on Tops and Bottoms. And you go going to get you exactly out of Top and the Bottom. You get the full fit, get the brim, the hat. You know, um, not necessarily the jersey, but the fit, whatever the fit was at the time. If it wasn't FUBU, a Fat Farm, an Academics, uh, or uh, Arful Dodger, or, um, you know, LRG, whatever it was. You get your full fit and you get the shoes. And the shoes came out early, you know, and you could get the shoes maybe like two months, three months before they come out. Now, Mike's was like, what, 165, 167 back in the day, something like that. But if you wanted to get them early, you only pay like 300 
270, 300, and you can just walk out with the shoes. So backdooring and getting shoes, early releases, that's not a new thing. We've been doing that, me and my brother Shane, my brother Fonzie, everybody in the hood, we've been doing that for a long time. I mean, we talking about, man, I'm talking about when we used to work with mom back in the day. Shout out to the team at Coda, shout out to the team at Cinnabon, late 90s, y'all know who y'all are. Uh, man, we get up early, go grab the shoes and stuff, you know, we are talking about back in the 90s, it's no big deal you can go do that type of stuff. So it's just become crazy. But one of the things I did want to do with this release, because it was supposed to be so many pairs, was just like walk around and see if I go grab a pair. But at the same time, go do my laundry. At the same time, listen to some 90s music in the car. So I'm not just talking about going and grabbing shoes, going and buying things, but I'm talking about restoring the feeling, y'all, restoring the vibe of how Saturday they morning used to be. It's so many people that um in their household, both parents, if both parents there, they gotta work. Or if it's one parent, that parent gotta work. Um, and so they really don't get to get that Saturday vibe. I used to love being in my Aunt Denise, uh cop with my cousin Stephanie, who I love and friend of us like my sister, my brother Shay and uh or Tony, you know what I mean, just riding around. You know, grabbing uh, groceries, riding out to North Riverside because you know, we want to leave the hood, at least see something a little better. This is before I was working at the mall, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just a lovely feeling. A Saturday is a lovely feeling. And as I prepare for the holidays, happy holidays to everybody, too. Um, you know, can we restore the feeling? Can we bring everybody back together? If you have one person, you know, that you wish could come to Thanksgiving, but they're not able to because either they live too far or unfortunately might have passed away. Who is that person? Who is that person that touches your heart right now? I'm just curious. Leave a comment down below. I'm not trying to get too serious, but what's up with restoring the feeling, y'all? And just bringing it back to shoes, being able to on a Saturday morning, just go in the mall, grab the shoes, get your um, um, Cinnabon drinks or uh, Jamba Juice or something. You know, walk around, hold hands with your girl and you know, and just make a day of it. And then go do some laundry and get the groceries done and get everything together because the week is coming, you know. Um, let's bring that feeling back, y'all. All right, Ace Heavy Camp for Dope Toys. I'm covering one of my favorite lines, my favorite line, let's be real, no cap, let's, let's keep it real. I like Transformers more than anything, more than G.I. Joe's, more than He-Man, more than any other old school 80s, 90s toy, right? Um, more than, I don't even talk about it often, but Bionic 6, I really like that show too, um, and the toys. But this particular toy, I have been waiting for for so long. It is from the Japanese anime, uh, the fourth uh, series of Transformers, and this one is particularly called Transformers Victory. This toy is Death Swords. Death Swords was the guy who fought a guy, the main Transformer who took over for Optimus Prime, which was a uh, Victory Saber. Okay, um, and then we have a Victory Leo, which is him when he combines this tiger thing. I know it gets crazy or whatever, right? But you know they do a lot of stuff with Japanese cartoons, but. We basically have the new Megatron, which is Death Source. This guy's coming out from Haslab, um, who used to fight with the new Optimus Prime, okay, with Victory Saber. Um, so I've been wanting this toy for a very, very long time, right? They've never made it in America. They made one in Japan, to be honest with you. Uh, and I have some Japanese exclusives too, right? But that toy is kind of ugly. Uh, and bulky as a lot of toys were back in the day, but it just wouldn't fit. It wasn't in scale with some of the other toys I would want to stage it with, film it with, whatever. So I ended up not getting it. But this I'm going to grab. So if you want it too, right, the time is still going to be open, I believe, to the end of the year almost for you to, to uh, I won't say donate, but to contribute to the fan project. Um, if they get over 11,000 people to contribute, then they will put the toy into production. Um, and if they get above that, then there's all these other incentives and stuff too. So please back this project. Do it along with me. Uh, I'm still waiting on the last project that I put money into two years ago. So maybe that's not promising to say that and not encouraging. But to be real, like they are going to deliver the toys. Uh, my uh, Victory Leo, uh, which I've talked about on the show before, is actually coming in the next three weeks. Finally, finally. So I'm very excited about that. I just got to go through the final boss. 
uh, which is the post office man. So, But I don't worry about him stealing my toys like I worry about him stealing my shoes. If I told y'all the story of waiting for those Air Jordan uh, 1 uh, fragment Travis Scott's to have and dealing with um, was it DHL, I, say, I don't even want to say what company it was, DHL or UPS, one of them, man, you wouldn't believe it. Um, Cause I swear, the post office people are the final boss, like on the video game, and, and you really, they really, really, really be trying to finesse. So, no disrespect to anyone work for FedEx or UPS, even though I do know some uh, sketchy people work for UPS in particular. I won't say nothing, they her name or nobody name right now. But anyway, <laughs> let me move on. I am so excited about this toy. Y'all can back it. Go to the Haslab um, Fans Project site which I have on, on the screen here. Or if you wanted to, you can go ahead on and just download the Hasbro app and then pull up on the tab for the HasLab Fans Projects. And then you can back some of those favorite projects you want too, like Ghostbuster backpacks, realistic, uh, not replicas, but like realistic, like one-on-one -on -one scale. Um, G.I. Joe. Uh, accessories and also G.I. Joe characters were very realistic and stuff like that. You know, very exclusive toys, big boy toys. You know what I'm saying? They say for big boys. Uh, but that's all I got for you guys this week for Dope Toys. Well, that's all we got for you this week, Ace Heavy Camp. Please, please don't forget to like and subscribe, okay? Check us out on YouTube on eBay, on IG, on Facebook, on everything, okay? Because we want to try to get things busting. We also want to try to create a community of people, of responsible sneakerheads that do things beyond collect shoes and trade shoes together. It actually is trying to make the world a better place. And that's what I'm about. So I'm glad I'm getting more subscribers. I'm glad I got more views. I'm glad more people coming. That's dope. But man, I don't see people telling me like the things that they've done to improve their community or to improve themselves as an individual so they can have a positive impact on the entire circumference of their cycle. So those are the type of things that I want to talk about and engage in as well as the sneakers. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Make sure that you're doing something good for somebody else today because you know we one win, baby. We all win. And most importantly, if you can't see it, before you see it, you'll never see it. Peace. Elevate. Yo, this Ace the Young Heavy, and I brought the war with me for the 2013, you did. Ace, I'm playing my cons, man, nobody could fold me. I've been in the game so long, Moses called my shit oldies, uh. If it's all about to come up, then I'm with it. Bands on the deep dish in it, fire when I spit it. Niggas think they know how much I make it when I hustle, now I add another digit. Now tell me, can you dig it? Is my album hot? Yep. Check the latrine, you can see that I shit it. Yep. Niggas say they ballin', but they pump fake pivot. I don't take a plan unless I need a passport with it. it. Every morning that I wake up, I'ma get it. Smoking on the frog, make a nigga wanna rip it. Get it, rip it. Pussy, I'ma rip it till it's all one hole with the ass. Badass, acrobatic bitch on the pole doing tricks. She done fucked around and spilt my glass. Who cares, cause the yak on tap. Put a rack on that. How long would a fast life last? I'm trying to stay focused. But it's hard as hell to stay awake. I'm yeah. going off the place. Yeah. Tell them again. Number one. That's right. That's right. That's right. Bitch, I'm flat. Check my altitude.